Convex is more than a database. It's actually your entire backend. I recently got a message from someone saying Convex would have been perfect if they could set up HTTP endpoints. And my response was, you absolutely can. And that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. So you can go over to the docs and literally under functions, we're looking for HTTP actions. And if we go back to Excalibur, Convex's HTTP actions are a way to expose your Convex backend functions as public HTTP endpoints. Usually you would use something like this when you're setting up a webhook or you're trying to run an external service or you want to connect a mobile or web client to Convex without using the Convex SDK. So I have a beautiful diagram here. Say we have a client here that's not authenticated with Convex. They can fire off a request to a specific Convex backend URL slash endpoint and then get a response right back. Something that's amazing is we can even interact with our Convex database using HTTP actions. But now that you have the rundown, why don't we set up an HTTP action together? So I'm on my terminal, I'm going to fire npm create convex at latest, hit enter, and I'm, we're going to call this project HTTP endpoint. And we're going to use Next.js app router, we'll have no auth for this one. So using the npm create convex command has scaffolded a Next.js project with convex set up for us. So we have a project set up. I'm going to run npm install to make sure all packages are installed. And then I'm just going to do npm run dev. Now what's going to happen is if you haven't authenticated convex yet, it's going to ask you to authenticate. You just sign up with your either Google or GitHub account. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new project. We'll call it HTTP endpoint. It'll be a cloud deployment. And in just a few seconds, we are fully set up. So I see my convex instance here. I see my database. I have a numbers table. And if I go back, I can go to localhost 3000 and I see my Next.js and convex project set up. Now that we have our app set up, let's set up our HTTP endpoint. So I'm going to go under the convex folder and I'm going to create a new file and it's going to be called HTTP.TS. Make sure you name it exactly that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import HTTP router from convex slash server. And then I'm going to take this HTTP router, initialize it and call it HTTP. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my HTTP route. And the way I do this is by passing path method and handler path is basically here in the diagram, the slash endpoint, our endpoint path that we are going to designate. So we can call this Michael. Michael's endpoint, the fact that we'll have it at that cursor knows best. And for method, it could be delete, get, option, pass, post. We'll just have a simple post request. So that's what the method is. And then handler is the function that's going to run when someone hits this HTTP route. We haven't written the function yet. We'll write it in a second, but I want to continue on and finish this file. And then once this is complete, what we're going to do is we're going to export default HTTP. Now what we can do is we can actually write the function here. And in order to write this function, we need to import HTTP action. And then we're going to also get the context and the request. And then what we can do is we can get the body from the request on JSON, console log the body, and then return a new response. So this is as simple as it gets. When you spin off one of the convex templates, you get a sample function. Um, and in this case, we have add number, which is a mutation that's going to add a number to our database. So what we're going to do is when someone hits this endpoint, we're going to fire off this function. The way we're going to do this is we're going to write await context. We're going to run the mutation. Actually, autocomplete is coming clutch. And we're going to import API. And what you see over here is api.myfunctions.addNumber. If I go on the convex folder, I see I have a my functions file. And then in going there, I see that I have an add number mutation function. So this is what I'm calling here. And I'll pass it the value one. What we're going to do is we're going to return a new response with the status 200 that the number has been added. So I have a curl request here where I'm going to test hitting this HTTP endpoint. And I'm going to see if this number gets added to my database. I see that the function has ran. If I go to our database, I see that the number has been added. So you can see how easy it is to set up an HTTP endpoint using convex. We can take this a step further. I can create a new file called numbers.ts and have the HTTP action defined here. Instead of just having the number defined here, I'm going to pass the number in the request. I'm going to get that number and then pass it in this run mutation. And it should work just the same. So I have my curl request again. 
So we're going to add in the body number and we're going to pass 555555555. Hit enter. We see that the function has run again. And if we go back to our database, we see that 555 was added to our database. So you can see how with just a few lines of code, you can set up HTTP endpoints that you can use with external services that you can expose to clients that are not using convex SDK or some other reason you find use for this, you can easily set it up using convex. Again, convex is not just your database, it's your complete backend. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what else you want to learn in the comments. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.